So let's look at an example where we find a linear model for some real-world data. Here's something I found in yesterday's Seattle Times article. So in 2013, there were 1,989 people sleeping on the streets. It's a one-night count that they do in January. So in 2015, on about the same night, they counted, and this time the number was 2,813. So now here's where I jump in. Let's assume that it's a linear relationship. I have no reason to do that other than I need to show you how to do that part. Um, let's find a function for the number of people as a function of the year. So this as a function of the year, that tells me that as a, that year is going to be my independent variable. And the number of people depends on what year it is we're looking. So linear relationship, that means equation of a line. Okay, so we're going to find a linear function, which means we need a slope and we need a point. So what I really stress doing to all of my students on questions like this is plot those two data points. It just helps ground you. So I, okay, now we have to figure out what the data points are. So I have a time, 2013, and a number of people. So if I write that as an ordered pair, it would be in the year 2013, that's my x value, my independent, and the number of people, 1989. It's kind of unfortunate that they're both feel year-ish. Okay. And then my next data point is 2015, and that number of people is 2813. Okay, now these numbers are not going to be fabulous to plot, so let's think about some scaling. Um, how about if we let our years actually be scaled from, say, 2010? So we'll let, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and use x. If you want to use t, that's great. But I'm going to let t e or x equals 0 correspond to the year 2010, okay. which means this first data point is going to morph into a 3, comma, 1989. And this next one will translate into a 5, comma, 2813. Okay. I know, they got really scrunched there. So now let's go ahead and up here, and I now I can just write out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 on my horizontal axis. Now my vertical axis, so we'll do a little break thing here because we're not going to start at 0. And I need to see, I need to be able to distinguish between 1,989 and 2,000. And this is just a rough sketch. I'm not going to make a big deal about it. Okay, so um, how about here's 1,000. 15, 2,000, 25, 100, and then 3,000. Just really, really rough. It's going to give me an idea if I get my slope right. Um, it also helps with who's the independent and who's the dependent. Okay, so 3 and something close to 2,000. Um, how about there? and 5, and something closer to 3,000. How about there? Okay. So I need to find the equation of that line. So one more time, we need a slope, and we need a point. So for the point, we can choose either one of those lines, or e I'm sorry, either one of those points. For the slope, we need to use both of them. Now remember, it's change in the y value over the change in the x value. I'm expecting a positive number. If yours doesn't turn out that way, that means, right, we changed something up when we wrote our fraction down. So change in y's over change in x's, start and end at the same point. Okay. If you're using the calculator, make sure you either use parentheses or do it in multiple steps. I'm just going to meet you at the bottom. 2813 minus 1989, close, start, 2. So it looks like my slope is 412. So you might think about, well, what does that slope represent? Right? It's our increase in y for a one step in x. So every year we go up, right, there are 412 more 
people sleeping on the street. Okay. And again, it's just due data points. I'm not making a statement at this point, but this is how we could come up with a, a function to approximate how many we would expect in five years. Okay, so now let's see if we can find this line. So I'm going to use the point slope form and then we'll get it to look like a function here in a second. So y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. We now have m. Pick one of these two points to be your x1, y1. I'll go ahead and grab the second one. It really makes absolutely no difference. We get to the same place. So y minus y sub 1, that's the 28, 13, equals m, that positive 412, times x minus x sub 1. So since I took 28, 13, that means I have to use the 5 for my x sub 1, just like that. And now I'm going to grab my calculator again because I'm feeling kind of lazy with my arithmetic, but we're going to solve this for y. Because remember when we're talking about a function, I need to have the y by itself so that I can write the f of x notation. So my 412 is going to distribute. I'll do a couple of steps here. So 412x minus, oh, I should do that one. In my head, 2060, right? I'm going to check. 412 times 5, 2060, yay. And then finish by adding the 2,813 to both sides. And it's going to be positive, so y equals 412x plus 753. Okay. Well, there's our function. We'll go ahead and make it look pretty. Still on screen here. So y becomes f of x equals 412x plus 753. So there is the function that gives us the number of people, f of x, when x is the years since 2010. So in the year 2020, we could estimate how many people we would expect to find sleeping on the streets. So in the year 2020, Here's a follow-up question you, you'll sometimes get. How many people in 2020? Okay. So for 2020, that's 10 years after, so we'll let x equal 10. Okay. That's my year, so that's the x value. How many people, that's the y. So to find that, I just evaluate my function at that x value, so f of 10. So 412 with a 0 plus 753. So 4,873.